So you've been eyeing that new iPhone 16 and trying to justify the upgrade. I know you have. It's okay because I have been too. While the iPhone 16 offers new features, it's not a must-have upgrade for most users. Now this may be a controversial topic and I may even get some flack or some hate for this, but I want to talk about why you really don't need that shiny new iPhone from Apple and why their marketing team is trying to make you think otherwise. All right, so I want to start this off with a little story that I feel like probably a lot of you can relate to. So let me know if you do. I used to be one of the biggest Apple fanboys around. Year after year, every single time Apple released a new phone, I would be first in line. I'd place my pre-order as soon as I possibly could, pay off the phone if there was any remaining balance, immediately list it on a third-party site like eBay, OfferUp, or Facebook Marketplace, and uh, probably just use an old phone that I had laying around literally every single time until the new one came in. This is actually one of the first times in a long time that I haven't pre-ordered. I don't want to say that I'm mad or upset with Apple for this release, uh, just overall disappointed. I feel like we've just kind of reached a point in time where upgrades just aren't as groundbreaking as they used to be, and I don't think it'd be fair to place all the blame directly on Apple. So with that said, let's hop into the first section. Okay, so one of the main reasons that I used to upgrade every new iPhone was for the improvements to the camera. It's arguably one of the most crucial parts when it comes to creating content, and it was something that I was genuinely interested in to see the advancements that would come with each iteration. It was something that I looked forward to each and every drop, and you know, being able to put the new features to the test firsthand was something that I truly enjoyed. The only meaningful difference with the cameras in the 16 versus the 15, specifically the Pro Max, is now the wide angle lens is no longer 12 megapixels and it's 48. I mean, the cameras have gotten so good at this point, in certain situations, you can basically replace a full-size camera. My most recent video talks about this and the pros and cons of a phone versus a camera. It was something that I was genuinely going crazy about, thinking, you know, who is for what and what is for who. So if you wanna check that out, I'll leave it up here somewhere. The screen on the 16 is relatively the same. It still comes with the Super Retina XDR, ProMotion display, always on, yada, yada, yada. It's slightly bigger, clocking in at 6.9 instead of 6.7 inches. The new processor is an A18 instead of an A17, but it still comes with the same six cores for CPU and GPU, as well as the 16 core neural engine. Playback comes in at four more hours at 33 as opposed to 29. I mean, to be completely honest, it was kind of difficult to write this section out. It's literally, I feel like I'm just listing off the spec sheet of the phone that I already have. So there were like three key upgrades to the new 16 Pro Max, with a few other minor ones sprinkled in. You've got the new camera control, the ability to record 4K 120, and the audio mixing features, along with better battery life and a new anti-reflective coating. The new camera control on the side of the phone does look nice, and it's the one that I was actually interested in the most when the, the phone was released. I like how it controls different things depending on single clicks, a double click, long press, you know, whatever. Having a dedicated button to start and stop recording, take a picture, and control your focus is really kind of bringing the phone closer and closer to being a real camera. Being able to record in 4K 120 FPS really isn't a huge deal for me in the end, but it is impressive to jam that into a small iPhone. I mean, that's not even common to really find on actual cameras for three, four, uh, five times the price. If you record ultra fast moving subjects like, I don't know, sports or wildlife, then you know it might be worthwhile for you to check it out. But if you're shooting something like that, you're more than likely not going to be doing it on an iPhone. I mean, if I want to film in slow-mo, 60 frames per second is generally more than enough for shooting B-roll or just about anything you'll need for social. One of the cool things about the new video feature is that you can adjust the playback speed after you capture the video directly in the Photos app. I don't know why I thought that was really cool though. <laughs> the audio mix feature was another thing that seemed kind of interesting, you know, having the ability to adjust your audio depending on the situation. You want to isolate the audio directly from your subjects, decrease background noise, or capture all the noise that's in the frame, you can do that. Now this all sounds great in theory, but if it's practical and works how it's described, We'll see. Better battery life may play a huge part in ProRes recording specifically. You know, gathering all that data using your camera in that way does chew through a battery pretty quickly. 
I mean, it's definitely noticeable in the 15. So if you're out and about shooting ProRes constantly, it may be something to consider. But if you shoot ProRes occasionally, I don't see it being much of an issue. The anti-reflective coating that was put on the lenses, I guess, is okay. I mean, iPhones are known for having reflections, glares, and sunspots, so to be honest, I really didn't notice a huge difference. Overall, two out of, I don't know, was that four or five? I don't even know if you can count battery life as five. We're cool to see, but do I think it's enough to justify an upgrade? For me, no, not really. Okay, so I think this perfectly segues into why you may just want to keep the iPhone that you already have. I think the biggest reason, obviously, for most people is going to be cost. Do I think these new features warrant another $1,300 plus investment? Not for me. My 15 Pro Max is still doing everything I needed to, using it as a B-cam right now, and then some. I mean, I don't think it's going to be slowing down anytime in the near future. I mean, the battery life is still amazing, camera quality, amazing. Still has the fastest Wi-Fi and internet speeds and still gets all the latest iOS updates. I mean, Apple supports their iPhone models for at least five to six years after release anyway. And by that time, I'll probably have the iPhone 2021 or something in my pocket. Speaking of software updates, I honestly think the iOS 18 brought more to my phone than upgrading the hardware this time around anyway. I mean, I don't know, if you want the new iPhones, buy them. There's nothing wrong with wanting them if you have the money. I think like anything else, it comes down to personal preference and of course, I mean, if you can afford it or if you should afford it. For the time being at least, I'm gonna sit this one out and be sticking with my 15 Pro Max. And I mean, you know, we'll see how things go. If you've been around for a while, first off, I wanna thank you. Secondly, I guess I wanted to make this video because I usually do some sort of unboxing video, a first look or something. So it just kind of feels weird not to be doing it this year. So again, long story short, I'm not buying a new iPhone, and you probably shouldn't either. Actually, I would say there's only two reasons to really upgrade. One, and obviously the most practical, would be if your phone is getting pretty old or broken. I mean, look, it's a meaningful upgrade if you have an iPhone 12 or older, I would say, in my personal opinion. And two, if you just like to set your money on fire. <laughs> I mean, people are gonna make their own decision. This is just my personal opinion. Take it or leave it, I just, felt like, you know, I wanted to share my thoughts. I mean, with technology constantly evolving, how do we know when, you know, upgrading our devices become more about satisfying that itch to buy things than actually improving our lives? I feel like it's so easy to get trapped in the cycle of thinking you always need the latest and greatest, but you know, when is enough really enough? So yeah, that's pretty much all for this video. We'll see where things go from here, but uh, yeah, for the time being, thank you so much for watching. If you found this video interesting, please hit that like button and consider subscribing if you haven't already, and we'll see you in the next one.